Hi guys, I'm Elisa and welcome to Moat Cottage Home City. Today I'm going to show you how I pressure can pumpkin. I have a small space homestead so I don't have much space to garden, but one of my top three crops to grow is pumpkins. Now they are a big crop, they take up a fair bit of space, but they are so worth it, for my family at least. When I'm deciding on which pumpkins to grow each year, I always choose ones with good flavour and that store well. And two of my top favourites are Queensland Blue and the Jarendale, which is a grey pumpkin which has excellent flavour. That's from WA, so that's an Australian pumpkin too. I make sure to harvest my pumpkins before the first frost hits. So I cut the stems, leaving a bit of stem in the pumpkin. I bring them inside and I just store them in the kitchen. We don't have heating in here. I store them on the shelves and they have space between them so they're not touching each other and there's good air circulation and they're out of direct sunlight as well. A shed can be good for this if you don't have rodents. I prefer to keep them in the house where I can keep a good eye on them. I don't wash my pumpkins. That's just my personal choice. This is what's left of my pumpkins six months on. So they're still in really good condition. They've got nice firm skins and there's no sign of mold or damage or anything like that. But we are heading towards summer, so I have to think about preserving them so that they don't go rotten. I don't want to risk the chance of losing these pumpkins. So like I said at the start of the video, I'll be pressure canning the pumpkin to preserve it today. I'm all set up for pressure canning. I've got my canner on the stove top with the water and vinegar in it. I've got clean dry jars and all my lids and rings and vinegar and everything ready to go. It's always a good idea to get set up before you start preparing the food. To preserve pumpkin by canning, you have to pressure can. You cannot water bath can pumpkin. And you cannot pressure can it as a puree or as a mashed pumpkin because it's too thick and it's not safe to pressure can that way. So we cut it up into one inch chunks. When you're cutting pumpkin, make sure you have a really sharp knife. And that will make it so much easier to cut. Look at that, that looks fantastic. It smells great too. All you have to do to prepare the pumpkin is to cut off the skin, take out all the seeds and any fibrousy, pulpy stuff, and cut the flesh into one inch squares. If you cut the pumpkin into smaller chunks, that makes it a lot easier to handle. Just get the seeds out and the pulp. And remember, you can eat the seeds as well. They're really good. You can put them on a baking tray and slowly roast them. They're delicious. Cut off the skin. I find when I'm cutting the skin off, it's easier to keep the flat side of the pumpkin on the chopping board so that it's not wobbling around. And it's the same when you're dicing the pumpkin up as well. Once you've got all your pumpkin diced up into the one inch squares, we blanch it for two minutes in boiling water. Check your jars and make sure they're in good condition, that they don't have any cracks or chips in the rim. Because if the rim of the jar has any chips taken out, then the lid's not going to seal properly. So just run your finger around the rim and hopefully you don't cut your finger. I always look first before I do that. And there's no cracks. They will look like they're in good condition. I usually make sure I wash an extra one, just in case. Fill the jars up and then we'll top them up with water, leaving one inch headspace. Fit as much as you can in there that's going to leave the one inch headspace, but don't squash down the pumpkin. We need the water that's in there to be able to circulate around the pieces. I 
I use fresh boiling water to top up my jars. You can use the water you blanched your pumpkin in, however, you will get a cloudy end product. So that's up to you. It will not adjust the flavour in any way whatsoever. So do what do what's works for you. Just get my one inch headspace. Get the debubbling tool and get out all your air bubbles. Go around the edges and squeeze in. You want to make sure you get all your air bubbles out so that you have the right amount of headspace. If there's air pockets in the pumpkin, then it's not going to be the right amount of water and the right amount of headspace. You'll have more headspace. So let's measure this. One inch. Oh, got a bit of pumpkin that's sticking up. Let's get that in properly. You can put a little bit more on that one. If there's too much water in your jars, just remove it with a teaspoon. And then we just lit up. So dip your clean cloth into some vinegar. This is just white vinegar. Wipe the rims of your jars to get any excess food off. I do the threads as well. And then wipe it with the dry part of the cloth. Using the vinegar side and the dry side. You've got to be careful because the jars are fairly hot at this point. I've got the can of heating up so that it'll be ready when the jars are lit it up. Two lids and place the ring on. Finger tight. You don't want to do them up too tight. So center your lids and do it up finger tight. Place your lid on, center it onto the jar. Put your ring on, finger tight. Now they're ready to go into the canner. Once the lid's on, we wait for the steam to start coming out of the vent pipe. When it does start coming out and we have a steady stream of steam, we're going to time it for 10 minutes like that. We've got a steady stream of steam now, so we're going to time that for 10 minutes. That's vented for 10 minutes, so now I'm going to put my weighted gauge on. You've got to be careful when you're putting your weighted gauge on that you don't burn your fingers with the steam because obviously steam was very hot. I've put the 10 pound gauge on because I'm below 1,000 feet, and then I'm just gonna let it build up to pressure. Once it's up to pressure, then I'll start timing. Because I'm using quart jars, that's going to be 90 minutes at my altitude with my 10 pounds of pressure. If you want to find out what your altitude is, look it up and then I'll leave the link in the description below for the Centre of National Food Home Preservation and that will have the information for the food you're canning, the size jars and the altitude that you're at. For my altitude, I can either look at my dial gauge which is going to be at 11 and if the jiggle is moving, that means it's at 10. So that's perfect for me, where I am. Now I'm gonna set the timer for 90 minutes. Stay nearby to your canner so that you can see what's going on. If you're following your dial gauge, watch it. If you're listening to your weighted gauge, then you listen to it. But you wanna stay in the room to make sure that it doesn't drop below pressure. 
Once your 90 minutes is up, turn the stovetop off and depressurize your canner back to zero. Once your canner is depressurized, wait for five minutes with the lid on. Once your five minutes is up, you can carefully remove the lid. Remember there's going to be a lot of hot steam still, so open it away from you. Then you've got to leave the jars in the canner for another 10 minutes. Then you can carefully remove your jars. My jars are on a wooden board to protect the table and on top of that is a tea towel to protect the hot jars from going onto a cold surface because that would be a shock for the jars going onto a cold surface when they're that hot they could crack and explode and then that would be a waste of all the work we've just done. I'm going to let these jars cool down for 12 hours somewhere where no one's going to touch them and burn themselves or be tempted to touch the lids and the rings. Once the 12 hours is up I'll be able to remove the rings wash the jars to get any food residue off, label and date them, and then I can put them away on my shelves. And I know that the food will be safe for at least two to three years. I'm one pumpkin down and I've got six more to go. But that's food security and I should have pumpkins until my next ones are ready to harvest. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.